Hello, Science 30s. Welcome to our video on pedigrees. Today, our goal is to use a pedigree chart to look at how traits are controlled by single pairs of genes between generations. I will know that you have successfully done this by showing me that you know how to use a pedigree chart and demonstrate how the modes of inheritance are passed. So we're talking monohybrid or sex linked, as well as you can add an explanation to that. When you look at a chart, you can say, oh, this is sex linked because. So this important information right here, we're going to put into a chart just below. I have included it here as well, because sometimes it's nice to just have a general, um, list of things, but we're going to actually work with this right here in this chart. So what you see here in your chart is a circle and a square. And a pedigree, a circle represents a female, and a square represents a male. Any individual who is shaded, much like this circle right here is, that means that they have the trait we're talking about. Traits can be things like hair color, eye color, uh, widow's peak, dimples, cystic fibrosis, color blindness. If we're talking about a specific trait and we are looking at a pedigree, a person that is shaded has that trait. Shapes that are not shaded, such as this one right here, do not have that trait. So we're going to pretend this picture right here is all about dimples. So if you're looking at this picture, the shaded individual here has dimples and the, the non-shaded individual right here does not have dimples. So in this example, I want you to write in your notes who has dimples. The shaded individual has dimples, so are they male or female? So in your notes, you would just quickly write down that this person is female. And the reason I know this is because it's circle and it's shaded. Next, we're going to look at individuals individuals that are married. So this is sent showing individuals who are married or have mated. How do I know? Because there's a line connecting them. Now, if you were looking at a line, a double line, so there was two lines in here, that would represent individuals who are related and who mated. So that means relatives had children. But for our purpose, we're mostly going to see one horizontal line. So in your notes, please write down individuals who are mated or married as telling me what a horizontal line represents. Now, we're going to look at that example again. Horizontal line shows mating. Now, if we take these individuals and draw a line down, okay, and then add some individuals below, that shows their children. So lines connect parents and children. So this line right here is connecting the parents to the children. When we read a pedigree, we always look to the left to the right, and the individual on the farthest side, on the left side, is the oldest, where the individual on the right is the youngest. So in this example, there are three children. We have two females, both shaded in, so if we go back to our original example, it means they have dimples. And then there is one individual who is not shaded. That child has no dimples, okay? Is this child male or female? I would like you to write your answer in right here. I hope you chose male because again, it is not shaded, so it means they do not have it, as well as it's a square, so it means it's male. We're gonna look at an example and work through this example together. And then once I'm done this example, uh, there will be another video going through all of the examples in your notes. Um, we will just keep that one separate because I want you to try them on your own. So in this pedigree, we're gonna do some labeling. So it says label the generations in each member of the generation. So for our purposes, when you label a generation, you want to make sure to label it with, so this is generation two using Roman numerals, and this is generation three using Roman numerals. Oops, that's not very good three, but. So one, two, three. Within each generation, we label or number our individuals. And you may see some of them that start, that continue with the number, so one, two, three, four, five. But for our purpose, we actually start over when we number, so this is individual one, this is individual two, we go back to saying one, two, three, and then we do this one as four, and we continue down that way until we've numbered all of our individuals. 
Once you have labeled all your individuals, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the pedigree and do some analysis. So it says, how many children did generation one, one and generation one, two have? So here's generation one, here's one, one and one, two. So you're going to follow the line down and you're going to find anybody that's attached to this horizontal line. So this individual, this individual, this individual, and this individual are all attached to this horizontal line. So that means that that generation had four children. Now, it says, what are their sex? So what are these individuals represented by? So I have three circles and one square. So they are three females and one male in this pedigree. The oldest child out of all of the children that they had is a female child because we can see it furthest left, okay, right here. So their oldest child is a female. Oops, that is not a very good E. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to analyze the chart further, trying to decide about inheritance. So it says this chart is representing dimples, and it says having dimples is recessive. So shaded means dimples, no shaded uh, means no dimples. Now, recessive individuals have dim have no dimple, uh, sorry. Recessive individuals have dimples and dominant individuals do not. So I'm gonna create myself a little legend here by saying if you have the big letter D, you have no dimples. But if you have the little letter, you have dimples, okay? Now, in this chart, it's telling you that by telling you about the shading, okay? But I read in here that it is a recessive disease, so dimples are going to have a little letter and no dimples are gonna have a big letter. Now, what it's asking us to do is go through and write genotypes for all the individuals on this pedigree. So that's what we're gonna do quickly. This individual and this individual is where we're gonna start. I'm gonna start with a big letter here because this person does not have dimples. They're not shaded in. So I know that they have to have a dominant letter. I don't know what their other letter is because I don't have any other in, any other ideas yet. So I'm gonna leave it. But I do know that this individual does have shading. So that means it is a recessive trait. So they're gonna have two little letters to show the recessive trait. I'm gonna go to the next generation and look for all the individuals that are colored in because that means they are also recessive and they're also going to have little letters. So I'm gonna put all of these little letters beside the ones that are colored in because that shows that they have the trait and it's recessive. Now, what we do know is this shows up here, 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 and here. These individuals that are attached to the line were born from these two individuals and their dad donated one of the little letters, but that means their mom also needed to donate a little letter. So I now know that the mom was heterozygous because she donated a little letter to all her children. Next, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna label this down here because I know any individual that is shaded is going to have these little letters. So I'm gonna do that really quickly if you could do that as well. Now what I have to do is I have to go and figure out the genotypes or the letters of everybody else. So this individual here, she has a large letter because she got that from her mom. She does not have the disease, but if she got this letter from her mom, she had to have gotten a letter from her dad. So she too is considered heterozygous. This individual here is in the same boat as her sibling. She got the big letter from mom, but also received a small letter from dad. And that is why her children with her husband can have dimples. Her daughter received a large letter from her, and that means the dad had to donate a small letter. So now I have completed this family part of the pedigree. Over here, this individual has a big letter, okay? I do not know their parents, but I know their children. And I can see that both of their children have dimples and the mom had dimples. So mom donated one little letter to each of her children 
and sh that means dad also had to have a little letter to donate to the children. So there we go. Now I have found all of the genotypes of the family members of this grouping, and I've shown that anybody who has a big letter does not have dimples, and anybody that does have dimples has two little letters. So question six says, what is the chance that the next child of individuals 2, 1 and 2, 2 will have dimples? So what I can do is I can create a Punnett square using their genotypes and make a prediction around that particular set of parents. So I'll put mom up here, dad on the side, and I will fill in my Punnett square. So this one is a no dimples. This is also no dimples. And down here we have dimples. So the question said, what is the probability of that child having dimples? So if I look at my pedigree, these ones show that this the dimples, and so it's 50% of my Punnett square. So I'm going to say that this is about a 50% chance. That's my probability. So what is the chance that a child of 2, 4, and 2, 5 will be a boy with dimples? So 2, 4, and 2, 5. So this one's a little bit harder because we're going to use a probability rule to solve this one. Essentially, it asks me what's the chance that it's a boy. That's right here, that it'll be a boy. Well, we know that it's a one out of two chance, okay? Boy or girl, that's what we're going with here. So I'm going to use this fraction to represent that the boy part of the probability. Next, I'm going to go and I'm going to make my Punnett square to decide about the dimples. Now the thing is, is if I, if you're doing well at this, you will recognize right away that when I set up this Punnett square, since both parents are, have dimples, all they have are little letters to give. So that means that we have a hundred percent of our, our children that they could have will have dimples. So the probability rule states, oops, sorry guys. The probability rule states that I need to, oh, hold on. I apologize. <laughs> the probability rule states that I need to take these two numbers and multiply them. So I'm going to take my 0 0.5, which is my 50%, and I'm going to multiply it by 1, because that's what 100% is as a decimal. And 50 times by 1 is going to give me 50. So the answer to my last question is I have a 0.5% chance. I'm not sure why this is doing this again. I have a 0.5% chance or a 50% chance that I will get a boy with dimples. So hopefully you got all of that before it exited and disappeared. If not, just re rewind this a little bit so you can add all of that back onto your screen. All right, so that is what a pedigree is. I will post another video with all the examples to help you if you are stuck on how to do the examples in your note package. If you have any questions, please let me know.